Welcome back, Mistakes listeners. This is Dave, and this is Parenting Mistakes. This would happen to be episode 66. We recorded this episode on June 18th, 2016. And this week, uh, Todd and I discussed yet another delicate topic. Should you yell at your kids? Well, let's, uh, let's dive in and find out. As you know, you can follow us on Twitter at parent mistakes and you can also like us on facebook at parenting mistakes you can also email us directly at parenting mistakes at hotmail.com and as always sit back and enjoy the show so dave yeah i have a high school graduate yeah you do that's what you were saying <laughs> are you excited about that yeah i don't have one yet so you know we'll see how it goes So here's a question for you, which is sort of a weird way to ask it. How should I be feeling? Oh, what? Really? Yeah. Well. I get that question a lot. Really? Yeah, I've gotten that question a lot over the last few weeks. Oh, so it's sort of how do you feel? Yeah. How should I be feeling? Do you think they're looking for a specific answer like I feel old? I'm not sure. Yeah, or, I mean, they're, they're sort of like, how are you doing? How are you doing with this? What's going on? Almost like it's, almost like it's a tragedy. It, it's, it's sort of asked, at least by some people, it's been asked in sort of the same general tone as when you've been sick or... You've had a loss in the family, something like that. Really? Yeah. What people do you hang out with? Like, well, you would I... think that graduation would be... In my mind, when I thought about Kayleen or Maddie graduating, which is so far off for yes. me. And I know it'll go in a blink, but it at will. this point, I'm looking at 12 more years of, you know, or, or probably a little less than that. But right. Um, I'll see it as a victory if they actually make it. Oh, right? Like, I, I would think that you would feel pretty great about the result of your child graduating from high school. Like, I do. And and it's not like everybody's coming up to me and offering me a box of tissues and putting their <laughs> arm around me and say, right. are you doing okay? Yeah, you're making it sound like a funeral. No, it's <laughs> – but, but – you tell me, yeah. Should I be jumping up and down? Should I be excited about this? What do you feel like an empty nester already? I think that's what they're implying. That hey, there's a significant portion of your life that's over, and it's certainly a milestone. And I, I, I it's a really weird way to take it. I, I, I suppose. Well, of course, everybody likes drama. And right. so the question at hand that they're asking you is – what it feels like to me is they're seeking out some sort of a emotional uh, – an emotional reaction from you. Yes. That will give them a little bit of drama. I suppose. Right? Hey, do you – how do you feel? Uh, well, I, it's such a significant time of my life and I feel old and, you know <laughs> – <laughs> You know, uh, okay, this is your last hurrah, Todd. It's it's past midlife now, so maybe you should adopt one. You know, you should make you feel younger, I guess. I suppose. Yes. Well, I have thought about this quite a bit over the last few weeks and months, and it is interesting that we put so much emphasis on this particular moment when really in the grand scheme of your life, Sure, high school has a level of significance in shaping who you are, and graduating from high school is – it's an event. But at the same time, it's not like anyone's life is over, and it's not like nothing has been accomplished to this point. I mean, it is a little bit of – it's a it's sort of a pause, as it were. Yeah, I guess, I guess it's a significant time, but the other thing that will be more significant – is when Emma leaves the house. Right. That'll be more. I think for my parents, graduation was a big wing-a-ding, but I remember my parents dropping me off at college. Right. And that was that was like, we are literally 
ripping whatever umbilical cord is left is now gone, right? Yeah. He's and, on his own. And we will do that in a couple of months. Right. So we'll circle back to that. We'll record a podcast sometime early September where I will tell the story of saying goodbye to her at school because she's yeah. going away to school too. So I'm taking her out there and getting her settled and then I will give her a hug. And And it's going to just be you, not Laura? Just me. Yeah, Crazy. Laura will be working. Well, my dad, starts. yeah, my dad was kind of the one who left me off at college as well. Although my mom was there for the one of the initial days, but my yeah. So I think it is it is interesting, and it's it's hard to obviously you can only put yourself in your own shoes. I don't I don't think you can put yourself in other people's shoes. For us, finishing high school is not necessarily an achievement for our kids. Like we don't see that as a. Oh, we've we somehow slogged through. Mm-hmm. It's like, yeah, okay, they finished, but we knew they were going to. We expected them to. Sure. And obviously, that's not for everybody. Not everybody has that same feeling. There are kids that do genuinely struggle, and I get that. So, I mean, it's hard to, at least for me, it's hard to sort of exhale and say, we made it. Sure. Somehow we survived. It's like, okay, yeah, high school's done. And there was some drama, and there were challenges, but I didn't necessarily have any doubt at any point that my daughter was going to finish and finish well. So I'm thankful for that. I feel privileged because I know that not every parent feels that. Well, you're an interesting guy, though. When well, thank you. you. Well, yes. when you when you are in the midst of of a lot of chaos you ground yourself and you say to yourself hey wait a minute here you're doing it right now you're assessing your situation and you're basically saying nope everything went the way it went the way it should have gone i wouldn't be where you're at i would be off the rail okay you know i'd be very involved in everything they're kind of involved in right i told you like you kind of asked me how did graduation go for you it was absolutely nuts todd but i'll bet for you it wasn't as crazy for me when i was say in emma's spot i was devastated that i was going to be losing my group of friends Mm. utterly rocking my world you on the other hand are like well somehow i'll connect with these people and i'm still alive and i'm going off to college and i'll have a brand new set of friends I do not process that way, (laughs) right? And so you're even here right now. You're like, my daughter just made a significant milestone, and (laughs) I'm kind of even keel about it. And I'm like, it's one of the things I love and appreciate about you. Should I jump up and down on the couch? Yay! (laughs) Well, that's what people are looking for, Todd. That's what they're looking for. They're looking for... Wow, what does your heart say? And you're like, well, no, I got to reel it in. Because one thing I've noticed about you over the years, and now that we've really interacted a lot lately, is that you go, was it really that way? Like, you'll say, Dave, was it really this crazy? And I'll say, yes, yes, it was, Todd. And you're like, well, I don't remember it that way. Yeah, you're right. You don't. Probably because it wasn't for me. <laughs> exactly. For you, it just wasn't. Well, I think that it is an interesting. Um, I think about it in terms of. And we could get very deep down the rabbit hole of sort of the human experience just in general. When you it, – it obviously was a – it was a joyful weekend. I mean everything went very, very well. We had a final concert with her on Thursday night where she sang with her, her magical group. She did a really fun duet with a longtime friend of hers. Uh, we had a graduation. We had a graduation party on Sunday. And everything went really well. My parents were here. Everyone was in a really good mood. It was a great time to celebrate. The flip side is if you put so much emotional energy into these events and you have such high expectations for how they're going to be sort of the pinnacle of your life, in some ways you're sort of setting yourself up for failure. (laughs) Mm -hmm. So it's not like – it's sort of like going to see a, a new movie where you sort of say, okay, I'm looking forward to this. I think it's going to be good. But if you walk into that theater saying, this film's going to change my life. Which is how I work. Yeah, I know. <laughs> That's how I function. And I'm, I'm, I'm sort of the, I sort of go, <laughs> I, don't, I don't want to say I'm, I'm a doomsdayist or I'm a naysayer or I'm more Eeyore, but I'm sort of like, okay, 
You're none of those. This, You're actually this, really this positive. This you film just... could it could be good. It could I hope it's good. All right. It could be good. And if it's not, then I'm not going to be shocked. That you have an ability, a unique ability to reel it in. I well, I know for a fact that all the same feelings are in there for you. You just take a fishing line and reel it in. Right. And I there's don't. Pros and, there's pros and cons to that. Yes. And I put out as many fishing lines and poles that I possibly can. And yes, every movie is a significant life changer. Right. And when it is a bummer, it is a massive bummer. I'll never get over Ghostbusters 2. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's nothing I can do about that. However, you know, there's Star Trek 2, and there you go. Which was good. Which was life changing. It was Absolutely. not life changing. It is it a life changing film. Uh, Schindler's List. Not a Schindler's List. Uh, Shawshank Redemption. Life changer. Dancing okay. with Wolves, life changer. Yeah. Yeah, this is should we, should we talk? Time. Should we talk about our topic for the day? <laughs> yes, I'm going to should yell at you. we go off on other tangents? <laughs> I'm going to yell at you. Right? That's on the... a side note, are you excited <laughs> about the new Ghostbusters? Oh, man. Whew. I want to be excited. It looks horrifying, which the original Ghostbusters did not have. When I see some of those images, I'm like, good grief, these special effects are horrifying. So see, I think this that'll is be... exactly what we were talking about. I'm approaching that as just kind of going, you know what, it could be okay. Yeah, and I'm looking at... Yeah, this exactly. Won't, I won't be shocked, and if it's really good, great. Yeah, and if it's really good, I get to ride on that bandwagon. See? Yeah, sure. I told you! Do all the time. <laughs> all right, so today we're going to talk a little bit about another topic of parenting... I guess you could call this volume, right? Yeah, We're talk totally. Volume. We're going to talk about whether or not you should or should not yell at your kids. I, I think you said it in the pre-show better, which was raising your voice to your raising child. Raising your voice. Now, again, kind of a controversial topic, similar to our last episode, but in this episode... Boy, this one is a weird one, and I'd like to talk about it just because it happens way more than it should. So I'm just going to put out right there that, yes, I have yelled at my children. As much as I really don't want to admit that, I don't really like talking about it. I'd rather be, you know, the parent that uh, always stays calm, cool, and collective, right? Um, yeah, I think the, the, the textbook easy answer is that, no, you should not ch yell at your children. That's yes. the obvious. Do you know the Short reason? Of, do you know the reason? I mean, the textbook reason as to why you should not be yelling at your child. The textbook reason? Yeah. Is this from your psych minor? No, no, no. Yes. <laughs> How did you know? Well, I don't know. You were saying it like you knew the answer to this. <laughs> I, I actually have an idea. I do have an idea. I do have an idea as to why you should not be raising your child. Raising your child. Sorry, raising your voice to your child. Okay. <laughs> That's a different topic. Different show. Go ahead. Oh, I thought I was gonna. I, well, I was mean, it a rhetorical you, question? You were looking parent, for me to say Elder it? parent, why, why, why? Well, how about this? Why, Todd Pfeiffer, should you not raise your voice to your child? Or what, when you say textbook answer, you shouldn't do it. So I'm not a psychologist, but I'll I'll play one on a podcast. Right. Well, your dad's a doctor. Well, he, he's not that kind of. I'm a doctor too. <laughs> oh. We both have doctoral degrees, but... I know. You know, here's the funny part. My dad delivers I, babies, and I... I, I baited you. I baited you. I was going to... trying to get you to say you're a doctor. I would say that yelling is sort of like the verbal equivalent of maybe hitting a child hmm. in some ways. That's That's pretty extreme. Yeah, I, it's 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 a different way of thinking about it, but it's it is a verbal jab at somebody. I mean, yes. if you think about the one time you should yell at your children is when they are in physical danger and they do not realize it. So when they are wandering into the street and they don't see the car coming and you yell at them, hey, or a car, or look out, or watch it, that's when you should yell at your child because 
Yeah, they need to hear you. They need to hear you. And if you're down the driveway... Right, and they need... Their brain needs to unlock from wherever it is and laser focus on your voice so that they change their action. That's the one time it's okay, in my mind, to Mm -hmm. yell at the child and Mm -hmm. say, look out, you're going to die. Sure. Yes, extreme measures, right? I think yelling is... I understand why people yell, and again, that's not to justify it, but I understand why. It is the similar idea to preventing them from danger. It's the idea of, I have conveyed a message to you that I do not feel you have either understood or absorbed. Mm -hmm. So rather than simply repeat it in the same words or same tone, you raise the volume hoping to solicit a more compliant response. Mm-hmm. How's that for textbook answer? Yeah, I, it doesn't tell me why you shouldn't do it. You're telling me why it occurs. I think it's... I think so it I, I, I'll back up and I'll say right. that you did say it is a verbal jab. Yes. Right. In fact, you actually said it's like hitting somebody with words. Yes. Now, again, that's not to say that I haven't done it either. I've yelled at plenty of people in my life. Sure. And Actually, I don't think you've ever yelled at me. No? No, I don't think so. Not even in high school? No, I don't think I've actually seen you actually really get mad at me. Oh, I'm sorry. Which is fine. I mean, I I don't want that now. I'm just saying I can't think of a time when you had angry face at me. You wouldn't like me when I'm angry. (laughs) Right. I'll go Bruce Banner on you. That's right. I can imagine you saying something like, Laura, or something to that effect, right? Your wife's name. Yes. But, uh, which I doubt has ever happened. No, I've I've raised my voice to my, my wife. Sure. I think what happens, and I've noticed this, is that when you raise your voice to people in general, people focus on the volume rather than the content. Yes. Now, for some people, that's the point, and they want that to happen because, sure, if somebody yells at you, it does make your brain go, oh, they're yelling at me. <laughs> yeah, they're they're a little more serious. Yeah. Right, it. I mean, we we've had we had ki- we had teachers yell at us at times. I mean, you know, coaches yelling at you, that sort of thing. Um, the difficulty with yelling is that it's almost like you sort of get one time with yelling. I mean, you can yell more, but if I yell at you and your brain sort of adjusts and goes, "Oh, okay, he's serious." The next time I yell, it's almost like it gets desensitized a little bit. Well, I have a I have a personal uh, philosophy. It's not a philosophy. It's sort of a uh, yeah. I guess it's a personal philosophy of my own. And I learned this, I'd say, when the past six about six or seven years ago. Uh, I'm a big yeller, and I've yelled at a lot of my friends over the years. Um, I may have even yelled at you, Todd. Or, you know, I just get loud and boisterous. I have no memory. <laughs> I don't. I verbally hit you. Um, so hard that you don't remember. Um, and I came to terms with... I, I got into an interaction with a friend of mine, and I was yelling at this person, and I realized that <clears throat> in my heart of hearts, I was very angry, and I was yelling truth, right? I'm like... Here is how I see it, and here are the mistakes that you have made, and I was dead on right about it. I had justification to basically tell this person what they were doing was absolutely wrong. Okay? Okay. But I did it in a fashion in which I was not screaming at the top of my lungs, but I was being very aggressive with my voice and intimidating. You need to, this is what's going to, you need to stop this, correct? And uh, I realized after that interaction that that person got none of my truth. They didn't hear a single word that I said. So I thought to myself, every time I yell truth, the yelling, 
the yelling the overrides the truth. The truth yes. is gone at that point. So yes. no matter what I'm saying that's completely right, if I'm screaming at an individual, it's gone. Right. And I thought, I need to live by this because if I don't, it means that no matter how much truth I spew out there at, at a very voluminous rate or uh, level, they're never going to hear anything I have to say. Because right. all they can hear, and what you just said was, they all they hear is yelling. And I right. thought, this is a great overlay for kids. Um, the other issue that occurs when I say yelling at my kids, and I wish I say I hadn't done it, but when I do yell at my kids, the immediately what happens is they feel hurt by it, and whatever thing they've done wrong, they suddenly say, my dad's yelling at me, and they feel like that's a bigger wrong. Correct. Right? So they're not getting anything. They're just basically saying, well, I'm in trouble, and it's pretty much dad's fault because he yelled at me. That's how they feel at that point. So all of that yelling that I did that actually in the moment makes me feel pretty good because now I have control. Uh, my eldest has a great way of just pu pushing the red button over and over and over and over again to the point where I can feel my volume going up and up and up. And then it gets to the point where I'm like, I'm just yelling because she's frustrating me to the point where I can't, I can't think straight. That's the other issue with yelling. Um, well, I think the other hard part is that, and we didn't really clarify this to begin with, the idea of raising your voice is a spectrum. Yes, absolutely. So some people will say, oh, well, I wasn't yelling. I was just talking with passion. I was talking a little... Because everybody talks at a different volume. You can... I think the, the takeaway here is, and, and the mistake that some parents would say is, oh, well, I don't yell at my children, therefore I'm fine. You can talk to your children in a very quiet tone that is still very sinister and, yes. very, and very scary and very hurtful. Oh, and I actually throw in some sarcasm there, too. Sarcasm. Like, it feels sarcastic. Like Yeah, passive-aggressive comments to them. That sort of thing. Yeah, it's a very weird parenting trick to stick yourself in neutral when conveying a truth to a child that's driving you nuts. Yes. And and that, that I think, is it's probably one of the biggest frustrations as a parent is that you convey a concept to your child and if I may play the elder parent here for a moment, please, <laughs> this is, this is where it, your, your kids are young. I mean, your kids are getting a little older now where they understand concepts. Mm -hmm. We, we understand that, you know, some parents, they struggle with, you know, like the toddler stage where you want to get frustrated with your child for doing something and you have to step back and go, okay, this child does not understand what they're doing. They really don't. They don't know the ramifications. Man, I and as much and I'll say, and as much as you know yourself how it needs to be corrected, they're just never gonna get the concept. Right. They they cannot reason at this point. You just have to wait a little bit for them to mature. It's as absolutely the absolutely frustrating. It is. And as the kids get older, you get to a point where you say, Okay, you understand this is not a complicated concept. You understand this concept. I have conveyed this concept on more than one occasion, and you. <laughs> yeah, have I can actually. What you're saying it, and I can actually see it's almost not neutral. It's yes. crazy. Like there is a yes. there's a directed authoritative voice in there, and I'm like, it's still not very neutral, which is right. funny. Well, well, and that's that's the dilemma, right? Because right. you in your brain, you want to go. How do explain to me how I can parent you better? <laughs> Right? <laughs> Even that has sarcasm. <laughs> it does. <laughs> oh my gosh, it's so hard to parent on this issue. Especially it is. when they have got your number, right? Right. Well, and, you know, I've got high schoolers. I mean, Emma just graduated. And, you know, Jonathan's going to be a sophomore next year. You know, like he, I think we've talked about this on the podcast before. He he likes to take, get out of the shower and wrap a towel around himself and yeah. walk down the hallway to his room and dump his towel on the floor. 
<laughs> right. <laughs> we sit there and we go, hey, buddy, you know, wet towel in a pile on your floor. Not good. No. This is not what it's we're It's boring at. a hole through this the floor. This is not a good thing, okay? <laughs> the towel's wet. It's on yeah. your floor. It's moldy. It's it's, yeah. Come on, child. Can I mean, you not see? There, and we've tried a bunch of, you know, we take, we've taken away privileges. We've given, we've done fines. We threatened to put like a a roll of paper towels in the bathroom to sort of say, okay, you get paper, t- you get a roll of paper towels to, to wrap yourself with. I love and, that. And, and you know, and again, big picture. Yeah. Is he going to have a difficult life because he struggles to you know put his towel on the rack? No. But you still, you want to go to him and say, you understand this concept. Right. This is not complicated. This mm-hmm. is not quantum physics. When you are done drying yourself and you put your clothes back on, pick up the towel, carry it back down the ten feet to the bathroom, and hang it up. Right. And Ugh. at that point, you know, yelling, yelling isn't going to do any good. Because at that point, the volume is really inconsequential. Because he knows that we want him to do this. Yep. Then it's more connected to, you know, what are going to be the consequences. Yep. So so I think it is something that, you know, parents need to be aware of. They need to be aware of their volume. But they do, they do need to be aware of their tone. They do. I think the other thing that's tough as a parent is that I know that there are parents that uh, – so as a, as a man, it's very hard for me to be – have the compassionate, sympathetic voice – after the fiftieth time that he's dropped his towel, right, right, I'm like, I kind of want to, I want a piece of him right now because, <laughs> man, I have watched this kid do this again and again and again. Why doesn't he understand that we've talked about this, and he just won't comply, right? Um, and uh, to actually say, you know, to pull Jonathan over, say for the fifty-fifth time, and say, son, this towel thing. <laughs> Can we talk about it? Because, you know, it just seems that you're just not getting the concept, right? That is actually me. That's my voice when I try to use reason. And I'm basically – one of my one of my objectives always with my two girls is to make sure that they are owning the moment versus me owning it. I think when I raise my voice, suddenly I'm owning it. Right. Um, but if I'm keeping even keel and we're kind of having a conversation about it about after the 75th time, um, <clears throat> basically uh, I want them to own it, right, versus me owning it. And if I raise my voice, I own it. They don't. Well, and I think it is also important for parents to be okay with – it's okay to be frustrated with your children. It really is. And I think it's okay at times, again, carefully and with controlled emotions, to communicate that. Yeah, I, I agree. To sort of say, I agree. look, this is bothering me. I'd prefer it didn't bother me. I'd prefer this was resolved. I would prefer that we not have this be a divisive issue between us. I'd like you to correct your behavior. I can't remember... I can't remember which child I said this to, but words are very, very important and they're very powerful. And I think I'm trying to remember there was there was a time I was frustrated with a child, and I didn't say I was mad at them. I think I said I was disappointed. Mm-hmm. And I think that that for them that word was more powerful than I'm upset with you. Because and, – and, you know, again, there's there's a fine line that you walk as a parent between wanting to motivate them in a positive way and wanting to motivate them negatively. Sure. Because, again, that, that's, that's also the challenge with yelling is it's a negative reinforcement where there isn't any positive for the child. All they're going to be looking for is I'm going to try to avoid the yelling in the future. Yeah, that's that's really a trick because uh, yeah, you're totally right there. I think uh, tone is important, but the fact that your child was really affected by you saying I'm disappointed in you, right? If you had said that, or if you'd said it multiple times before in an angry fashion, it wouldn't have any impact or meaning, right? And I think that's you know there there are times when again you can 
convey your level of frustration. It's okay to say to your kid, you know what, you didn't do this, and I'm I'm disappointed by that. Yeah. So. Yeah, and it, and it doesn't have to be in a yelling fashion. And I think yelling actually over and over again with, say, that particular child, when you'd say you're disappointed, to be like, I know you're already disappointed in me. <laughs> right. Right. They figured that uh, out. Yeah. Versus, hey, you know, I, I've treated you fairly even and fairly fair, and to actually have this happen is pretty significant at that point. It actually, for you, it sounded like it was a little less parenting. Uh, because you've actually instilled some uh, some good parenting already ahead of time. Like it was a payoff in parenting. Yeah, well, and look, you you play a little psychologist with your children all the time. Mm -hmm. And you have to sort of figure out ways to guide them in, in a way that is consistent between your children but also takes into account the fact that yeah, they are motivated by different things. They just are. And certain words will, you know, have an impact on them. And that's okay. But that, to me, I think uh, that, uh, it's interesting. Uh, there's, a, there's a term I always use, which is default parenting and thoughtful parenting. Mm. And uh, in this case, what default parenting does is it gets you kind of results immediately. So if Keely's pushing my button over and over again, and I begin to yell at her, and I get her attention... And she stops. Then I'm like, "Whew, we're over that for right. now." Right. <laughs> but in the long term, again, she has just taken my yelling and said, "Well, Dad just angry at me. It's kind of his fault." And when I actually do want to have a meaningful conversation with her, there's no groundwork laid there. Correct. We're always having this instant parenting result versus if I calm in this situation and I continue to deal with her as a respectable human being. Um, and treat her that way, over time, the more subtle conversations that we have will have bigger impact. And I think it's also important. There have been times where I've raised my voice to my to a child, and sort of after we've all calmed down, I've gone back and I've apologized to them for raising my voice to them. Yes. Because it's important for us as parents to say, hey, look, we're, we mess up too. We it can is, be in it, the wrong. We, we, we can parent badly. And that's okay to admit. It is amazing to me, Todd, how similar we are in parenting. It's crazy. Sometimes. I just think Sometimes. to myself, I, I always think you guys do it so differently, but not not totally differently. I think we sit on the page a lot on this stuff. Yeah, well, my mom thinks we do things differently, so there you go. Oh, and that's fine. We do. Yeah, I fine. mean, we're we different do. human beings, but I'm just saying yeah. there's sometimes I'm like, yeah, absolutely. This is totally right. Or it, maybe it's just our pie in the sky dream of what parenting should be we both strive for it yeah exactly <laughs> we're all faking it for the audience right <laughs> speaking, speaking of, of? Our yeah that's of right our audience, <laughs> hey, good segue you can follow us on twitter parent mistakes you can like our facebook page parenting mistakes a few more of you have liked our facebook page and uh you know i would not be i would be disappointed if our fans didn't follow us how about that will yeah. that work Mm -hmm. Yeah. You can also uh, support us on Patreon. And, yeah, you can let people know that they can pick up this podcast on Podomatic, on iTunes, and on YouTube. YouTube. So, on that note, I'm not going to yell at you. <laughs>